YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gout Racer 2003. It's been a little bit since we played, probably a couple weeks. We're right back into the swing of things. We're in year 20 of this game. Uh, perfect art. Perfect Dart has been a monster. I don't think I've ever had a Gallup Racer original in 2003 or 2004 that have won this many G1s. Of course, in Gallup Racer 3 on the emulator that I do in my live streams, Storm Lark won over 10 G1s. But Perfect, look at her. She's raced 50 times here. And she could still probably race. And I have her on an undefeated streak. Um, to be honest, I kind of want to keep racing with her until she drops a race. I know she's 7, but... We can race her until she's done, really. 50 starts, 17 wins, 3 places, 5 shows, 10 grade 1s. Once she kicked in, it was over. Absolutely over. Um, so what I'm going to do, I definitely want to breed her this year. So I'll race her until, obviously, breeding season, and then I'll retire her. Because I think I'm going to breed her and Best Hunter. Because I can't breed her with any of my other studs. I don't want inbreeding and the other ones just are not good enough. Best Hunter is like really the next best thing after Crimson Art. Mr. T is like her half brother. Again, inbreeding doesn't work for me. Some people will say it's fine and it's a video game. It doesn't work for me in video games. Like it messes up my line. So um, I don't really have much option. And the thing is, the crazy thing is, I can you can still do training. I didn't realize you can still do training with your horses even after they've retired. Or at least, I mean, not after they retired. After they've hit the track um, for a while. I thought maybe after their three or four year old season training would stop. It, uh, it hasn't. It really hasn't. So what I want to do for Perfect Dart, um, keep in mind as well, she does have a title, Sprint Champ. And she was able to get Best Sprinter and Older Mare in her five year old season. Um, so point being, Perfect Dart is uh, going to be a great brood mare for us. Our best in this game. Uh, so far, obviously, and again, really, really, really happy with her performance um, for us and how well she's done because it was looking rough with her for a while. I, I was kind of at the point where I'm like, oh, is she going to amount to anything? And oh boy, does she. Oh boy, does she. So let's get her in a race. Um, she runs five to eight. They want her in a grade three. Are there any grade uh, one she can run? Probably not. Yeah, no grade ones for her. Oh, she can't do the Royal Cup, but she won't be happy at that point. To be honest, I think that's a perfect way to send her out um, anyways. Because racing her in these grade threes, what will that really accomplish for her? Yes, we'll earn some money, but that's really about it. Um, I'd rather race her in, in her last grade one in the Royal Cup. She'll be a little bit anxious, a little bit unhappy about waiting for quite a bit of time but i think it'll it'll suffice so we'll go ahead and do that uh for her honeybee uh hopefully she's developing quite nicely now she is from crimson art out of scotch dancer she's also gonna have a very late growth type she is a closer her speed is okay 73 but for her to be a closer i, I would like for her to have more but again since she's late developing that stat is going to shoot up she's got four stats in the 70s now which is good her response could get up to 90 her health could be a mid 80 her speed will probably top out at like a low to mid 80 at the highest and then maybe her guts will finally hit 70 in her field so she'll have several stats half of her stats will be in the 70 when she's really at her peak now keep in mind perfect dart really started coming into form her five-year-old season uh, her half-sister, Honeybee, is only four years old. She won her first, well, she won a race uh, last time out, her second race, second win in Montreal. So, for Honeybee, let's see what she can do. And uh, we'll run her in this grade three. Um, I might try to buy a Colt as well. I may try. Uh, once I retire Perfect Art, I may look to see if I can buy a really cheap colt. Or a, you're not even a cheap one. A really good colt that I could use for breeding. Maybe I can find some money and luck up. I won't race the colt. I'll literally just retire him just to breed. And Agent Daisy. I don't know what's going to happen with her. She's got some good abilities. She comes from Crimson Art out of Red Daisy. This will be Crimson Art's third foal? Yeah, Crimson Art is all gals. Can you believe that? Crimson Art has yet to have a colt yet. It has all been gals. Um, it would be nice to get a cult eventually, a son, but I'm not going to be picky. So Agent Daisy from Crimson Art out of Red Daisy. No idea what she's really going to be like. I think she'll be okay, 
but Red Daisy could potentially taint this line. But I won't know until we get there, obviously. Now, she wants to run on dirt. She can run on turf. She's good on turf, but dirt is much better for her. So we're going to go ahead and get her in this 8 furlong open. See how she handles that. Uh, I'm excited to get back into this game. I am really excited to get back in. And uh, let's go ahead and rock and roll here. So I appreciate you guys' love and support on the channel. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. And most importantly, if you're listening to me right now, hit that like button. It does help out a lot. And I would greatly appreciate it. To say the least. So, here we go with Honeybee. She's up in a grade three, the Aquatraz, whatever. Uh, eight furlongs on the turf. Okay odds, middle of the field. Kind of a tough race, to be honest. I mean, there's like four horses that aren't expect that that will probably be out of the money as far as top 10, really, not in the money itself. But they won't have a chance. They shouldn't have a chance. But everybody else, 10 out of these 12, 14 horses have a chance to finish in the money. That's kind of the scary thing. So I think it's going to be a tough race for her. And again, we're going to be running her, obviously, as a closer. And um, I guess our best thing to do is just to, um, yeah, just kind of stalk the pace. Keep her closer towards the front, even as a closer. Like, not so far back. Not the greatest start. I'll, I'll work with it. That's really what I'm going to have to do with her. But honestly, like, um, yeah, running her as a closer, she should be okay. Keep forgetting this game, you don't have to worry about uh, trying to get triple sevens for, like, the revolution. Um, going back and forth between this game and 2004, I, I really, really, really do appreciate this game. I like 2004, but again, the anxiety of having to worry about losing my foals, it, it takes, it, it, for me... It's kind of a big deal. And people will defend that. Some people will. Some people have. And I'm like, why are you defending a broken game mechanic? That's so goofy. You know what I mean? Like, clearly if this game was made in modern days, they would have patched that. But I, I still get... I will eventually get a comment defending that and telling me, just race better. Just race better. It's like, bro, it's a broken game mechanic. It doesn't matter about me racing better. It's not really the point. Now, she gets spurt here. Let's see if I can fit through that gap with honeybee it's gonna be tough but she's still fighting furlong left to go she's still fighting and this is all i want to see it's all i want to see i started a little bit late she's still pushing through pushing through i think it's gonna be a top five it will top four finish i didn't get my spurt started okay top five that's a warm-up race i got a little bit distracted in the last three and a half we were supposed to finish six we finished fifth i'll take it uh, we'll do much better next time out with her. But that was actually pretty good. I felt comfortable with her. Uh, she does show some fight at the end there. Um, especially running as a closer. She saves ground. She saves stamina. So if I get her going a little bit sooner, I will really be able to have a strong run with her. All right. Uh, do we have any more races this month? I don't think so. Yeah, we're, we're good until next month. Let's go ahead and skip. All right, Striking Moon. Not sure about this one. Striking Moon is from Undercover Agent out of Dear Puffy. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to be like. Uh, Entrust, again, since I've done a couple of seasons of manual training and then the Entrust training, I don't think the manual training makes that much of a difference. I'll just stick to Entrust. Honeybee, let's get her going again on the dirt. Um, oh, no, Turf. She is a Turf horse. Don't know why I thought Dirt. Uh, stick to grade threes for now. So I feel like I can start winning those pretty easily. I, I'm going to keep her there. Um, yeah. What ultimately will help, I think, our horse's results in training is, uh, there's got to be something to the entrust training now that I think about it. I wonder if scoring higher manually during those training sessions enables you to score higher for entrust. It has to be a thing like that, right? Because some of those games I'm just bad at. Like, I just... I'm not even going to try to, like, perfect it. It's a waste of time for me. So, I wonder if Entrust Training really does depend on how well you do in those mini games. If so, that, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. I don't know how that's going to work. Anyways, we're up with Honeybee again. Uh, yielding conditions here today. Grade 3, again. Awful taps in this field. Again, a pretty tough field for, like, six or seven horses. The good thing is, though, we are, like, the second favorite. We can actually win this race. This will be her third win. We're the only closer in the entire field. I like seeing that. And, again, expect her to get better as she approaches her five-year-old season. As you can see, her stats have already improved. Her speed jumps up to 74. It was at 73 last time out. 
The beautiful honeybee. Let's see what she can do. Let's see what she can do. And ultimately, let's try to get this win. Perfect start. That's what I wanted to do in the first race. We get it. And now, because of that perfect start, just slow her down. Slow her down. Slow her down. Slow her down. And go. Okay. Not that much, but just enough. She's fine. And I even as running her as a closer, like, I'm sure I could still probably keep her ahead of a horse back here. Like, the positioning may not be great, but I think she'll be all right. And again, naturally, because the AI are just too predictable in this game, I'm going to have to make her uh, show her run on the outside. Like, I can't hope for the inside to clear up. It's so frustrating because when I watch real horse racing and, like, you know, jockeys are just able just to send their horses to the inside and it just opens up like the Red Sea or whatever. It, it's, it's frustrating in this game when you can't really do the same because the AI are just not programmed to be intelligent in that regard. You know what I mean? Now, I'm going to get her moving now because I got her going a little bit late last time. Get her going. Get her going. Get her going. She's got plenty of stamina. Get her going. We're not going to get blocked. Okay, she's got plenty of room here. Okay, she does get closer. Don't get in my way. She's got a long way to go. I don't know if that ruined our race or not. Nope, she's still she's still coming on. Furlong left to go. Honeybee, driving, driving. Over whipped her, but I think we're still going to get there clearly at the line. That's a good grade three win for Honeybee. Let's go. Not even a perfect race. She gets the win. Shows that pedigree of her father, Crimson Art, as well as her mother, Scotch Dancer, who was amazing as well that's a really good hard-fought win there for honeybee all the way from the back if she gets faster over her career guys mark my words she could be a, a the golden monster of our 2003 series we haven't had one in fact we haven't really had a philly like golden monster in like years and this game or 2004 pink gemstone is close but she didn't have the speed honeybee's actually fast clearly um Position was still S, considering, so I so I can run her ahead of a horse. Good win, though. Her third win on the season. I'll tank it. I won't tank it. All right, that's a really good win there for Honeybee. Must needed win. And uh, we'll see when she'll be ready to go again. But yeah, that'll make her 20 starts again. Any fall coming from Crimson Art, they're going to have a lot of races. So don't look at like, oh, they've raced 20 times, but I've only won a couple. Like, they're late developers. They're not going to be winning right out of the gates. Like, literally, it's going to take them at least two years. But as you but you see the success. I think Basic Blue mentioned it in one of his live streams. And, bro, I totally agree with you. The, the late bloomers are worth it. I just think some people are just impatient and they're not willing to wait. But the late bloomers are definitely worth it because you have more time to develop with them. And then once you know how they run, I mean, it, it's it's titles and domination. You know what I mean? I'm going to try her out in a grade two. We got that grade three under our belt. I feel comfortable with Honeybee. So we'll try her out in that grade two. Um, but most importantly, let's get to Agent Daisy's ooh, second race. Or first one. I forgot how how much have I raced her. Four times. Yeah, okay. Four races. Okay results. But again, look at her stat. She's not great. Um, she's still from Crimson Art, so she still has a chance to be okay. And she does have good abilities. Or she has two decent abilities. More so hard. Solo is kind of whatever. But um, yeah, Red Daisy does come from Best Hunter out of the way she goes. So yeah, Red Daisy wasn't terrible. Um, but still. Agent Daisy, I don't know what she's going to do for us. I have no idea. I still want to give her a chance. Uh, she'll have a late growth spurt. Any foal coming from Crimson is going to have that. So I'm curious how she'll develop. That's my main thing. And again, bad odds. And these bad odds to me tell me that she's still developing. Um, so yeah, it wouldn't make sense to abandon her. If anything, I'm going to treat her like I usually treat my late developing horses that I'm not completely uh confident about at least early on i'm just gonna race her less often until i feel like she's closer to being at her peak irish dancer is in this field and the favorite lost carol nice time it's a competitive field we'll make do but yeah agent daisy i will try my best to extend her races out a couple months at a time uh, so i don't race her too often because her stats are not going to improve that much between now and six months anyway so there's really no point in like stressing racing her that often but again, she is from Crimson Art, so perfect art. 
has turned out great. Honeybee is developing. We just won a race with her. So I think Agent Daisy, she'll be able to win. I don't know how dominant she'll be. I don't even know if she'll be dominant. But we'll wait and see. That's what's happened in this game, in my games. Like, we'll be like, okay, this horse doesn't look great. It may not amount to nothing than it does. And then sometimes the horses actually do turn out to be something better than we thought. Now, it still says bad position. I mean, my goodness. Do they really want me ahead of just one horse? How many horses do they want me ahead of? Okay. It's like seven horses here. Yeah, it's quite a lot of horses at the front. Way more than I thought. Are you in the way or not? Can't really tell. Almost overwhipped her. Bad positioning the whole race. Again, Agent Daisy, she is going to be quite the project to develop with. Um, she's dropping. Not a good race. Didn't have her in good position at all. Um, so, yeah. We'll have performances like that with Red Daisy. So, like, nobody should, like... You know, throw their arms up and, ah, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, rawr. you know, don't, don't go all mad pirate on me. Like, please, you know, like, let, let's understand how this game works, especially with certain horses. And we were supposed to finish 11th. We finished 12th. I wasn't even that far off. The positioning was bad and that ultimately messed up my timing of the spurt as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, bear with me guys for a second um apparently my girlfriend just got an upgrade uh or excuse me a promotion at her job and a new office space um all new stuff that's pretty amazing uh she definitely deserves it that, that place has stressed her out so she's looking for a new job and until at least she gets something new she definitely deserves that um gotta make sure i show love man gotta make sure i show love because that that is amazing i'm happy for her well, that was a struggle with Agent Daisy. She's going to be a struggle as she continues to develop. What do I even have her on for a training regimen? Balance? Yuck. Why do I have her on balance? Uh, I don't know what to focus on, though. Her stats are all pretty bad. That's kind of the problem. Like, um, Her stamina is not going to improve that much. Her speed is blah. Yeah, I really don't know what to improve. I guess balance is the best thing to do because her stats are just not good. Like, like, so next up is going to be a perfect art. Speaking of her, in her last race with us, ten. G I can't believe she really has won ten G ones. Like, I know I've been obsessed with her. I just I couldn't recall her being that great. And of course, I know doing these manual training sessions will help. But ugh, striking moon. Who is he from again? Undercover Agent and Deer Puffy. I forgot which of their stats they have. I'm just sticking with Entrust Training, to be honest. Like, I don't have much expectations since we use Undercover Agent. I liked that horse. He did win a G1 somehow. I think he won three grade ones, right? Undercover Agent did, but he was still average beyond that. His stats weren't anything crazy, crazy. So, yeah, with that horse striking moon even though dear puffy obviously was great um dear moon i'm not sure what to expect from him you know what i mean uh so i, I want to be a little bit more flexible and i'm not going to stress it no no expectations horses i have no expectations for and i just enjoy working with them that that that's fine for me every horse is not going to be a grand slam champion that's just unrealistic She's up in the royal cup and she's not the favorite but this is going to be her last race we have a chance to win it sudden crush is up there at the top. Uh, Mad Pirates in this field. Lemon Salon's the favorite. Naked Moon. Um, so yeah, pretty competitive seven horses. We have a chance to win. Um, we do have a chance to win. Uh, this will be her last race. What a career for this beautiful gal. Seriously, you guys have to appreciate Perfect Art, man. She has achieved more in this game and 2004 as an original than any other gout race original we've ever had that means she's achieved more than king uh, king b she's achieved more than great bolero she's achieved more than pink gemstone the list goes on she is the best original between these two games i haven't had an original win 10 grade ones that's insane <laughs> for me at least um oh my gosh i'm just so so happy she really turned out to be worth the wait because i remember in the beginning i was a little bit worried but boy worried for nothing honestly so 
of all of our originals from Gal Racer, our top two, Storm Lark and Perfect Art. <laughs> if I could breed those two, oh my gosh, could you imagine? Storm Lark and Perfect Art. They are our best two Gal Racer originals. Storm Lark is the best for the boys and Perfect is the best for the gals. It doesn't mean they're my favorites. It means they have been the best on track statistically. And that is fact. Fact and factual. All right. She gets out well as always. I love it, man. I'm telling you, she's such a fun horse to ride in this game. I'm really blessed to have had the opportunity to have created a horse like her because she runs so well. She gets out the gate well. And the game is about to say bad position. Relax. Relax. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. We're running with a lot of front runners in general. A lot of proceeders today. But I'm here. We're fine. She's gonna have a long way to go. Gotta get her going now, though. She's got a long run. Don't block me, please! Could have just stayed in that lane. You didn't even need to drift, bro. Down the stretch we come in the Royal Cup. Perfect dart. She's still driving. Give her a couple more taps on the whip. Over whipped her. She's still driving, though. Still driving. She's getting past the 11. Over with her again. May have ruined the race. No, she's still here. Perfect Dart is going to go out, I believe, with the bang. Win the Royal Cup at the wire. This is what I mean. She is the... She is such a fun horse. Oh, my gosh. I wish I could race with her for another 50 races, honestly. She wins the Royal Cup to go out with a bang. My goodness. Considering I over whipped her twice in that race. And we almost got blocked, but I just avoided that. Oh, man. I I mean, I don't have to retire her now. I don't. But I do want to get to breeding with her soon. I could still go for another title, though. Maybe, maybe it's not meant to retire her now. Maybe it's not meant... Maybe it's not meant to retire her. Because what title could I go for with her this year? Speed Prince? I'm going to check that out. She's already got one title. If I... I can make her... Legendary. I'm going to see what races she can do. She can still run, guys. She can still run. As a seven-year-old. She can still run. By the way, I did get a uh, bigger memory card, 128 megabytes, which means now I can save every single replay. And I should have saved that one. Uh, gosh, I forgot. Okay. I want to save these replays because uh, I'll be using those for like highlights and stuff. But perfect art. She can still run. She can still run, man. 18 wins. 11 grade ones. 51 meets. Look at her conditioning. She's still fine. 81 health. She's still fantastic. Talk about an absolute queen. If you haven't understood the magnificence, the elegance of royal, of, excuse me, perfect art, she might as well be royalty at this point. I don't know what to tell you. I am looking at titles. I'm going to see if I can get her a title. When is the Universal Cup in this game? I'm just seeing what special races are here. I could try to get her the GWS. I definitely should try that. You know what? We're not retiring her this year. I thought about it. No. This could be her last year. She still has, She's still too good. She's still too good. Still too strong. Look at her. She only needs a couple of weeks off and she's already ready to race again. Seriously. What an amazing horse. If you haven't used Crimson Art in this game, I don't know what you're waiting for. Because it's really all from him. I'm going to run her in this Regal S. It's going to be a tough challenge. But she's won 11 grade ones. Going to give her a shot at that race. So for breeding this year, uh, I don't know who I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do Scabbin and somebody for sure. I could do Scabbin and Crimson Art again. I could. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Can I scratch her from this race? I can. Okay, hold on. Because I want to see... I didn't even look through all the grade ones to see if there was anything else I could get her for, like, a title. Spring Mile. See, that's what I'm looking at. I could try to get her those... See, Spring Mile... Royal Cup. Why can't she compete in the Royal Cup? When is it? Is it at a different time in this game? It's in June in Gallup Racer 3. Where is the Royal Cup? Or is she not eligible for it? Maybe she's not. Is the Royal Cup only for 3-year-olds? 
I guess so. That's certainly not... Or is it at a different time? See, the Roll Cup is the first week of June, and the Spring Cup is the fourth week of June in Gallup Racer 3. Why do they change, like... Okay, whatever. When is the Royal Cup? Is it at a completely different time of the year? There is a Sprinter's Cup. Those are two races. Mile Champ. That's so weird, bro. I don't see the Royal Cup here at all. It should still be popping up for me, but I don't see it. It must be at a different time. When, though? Like, when is the Royal Cup? That's literally my question. But I'm not seeing it, so I can't even go for that title for her. Unfortunately. Um, what can we go? We got our sprint title already. Mile Champ. Yeah, we'll go for Mile Champ. I don't know how many G1s she has. I'll run her in the spring mile to get that started. Mile Champ, she needs to win six G1s at eight furlongs, and I'm pretty sure that doesn't have to be done in a year. Well, in Galbraith 3, it doesn't have to be done in a year. I don't, I don't know about this game. Can I look at all her races? Ah, see, I've... None of the Gallup Racers, I feel like, allow you to look at your horse's races from the beginning of their career. It's so annoying. So she's got the Regal. She won the Regal S last year, so that's one eight furlong race. A lot of six. The Mile Champ, that's two eight furlong races. So she's got two as of the last two years, but I don't know how many she's won before that. Regardless, I mean... I'm only going to run her in grade ones anyway, so I'm just going to run her in whatever pops up, and if it's a title I can try to go for it, then great. If not, I'll probably look for another one. Honeybee, she's up again. And um, good odds here today, as she has been getting. She, she's progressing. She's developing. So, tough field for a couple of horses, at least the top six. Being Amber's here. Sexy pageant, Blitzen. But um, we can win this with Honeybee if I time it right. It's the only thing about a closer, man. Um, it's harder to get inside rail trips, especially when you deal with the AI. And like I said, the AI just don't get out of my way. So I noticed watching some of you play uh, Genesis, Elite, Basic. The AI always seem to, to move out of your ways. Like, I feel like you guys are much... You have much better... Um, luck at that but like they just don't move out of my way when it comes to the rail man they really don't so that's why i just run my horses on the outside now because i don't even want to it's annoying it's annoying to hope that the inside is going to clear up and then it doesn't like it just it really doesn't work for me especially dealing with a closer like i can't really afford to take that risk because i'm already running from the from the back you know what i mean so like i can't hope that the inside is going to clear up because if it doesn't then i'm screwed and the race is over so I'm just literally going to tail whoever's in front of me. Sunny Pleasure, thank you so much for keeping me on the back end. I will save as much ground as possible. The inside could free up, because I don't know what these horses are going to do. But again, she needs more speed. She's fast, but she, she would need to have like a 90 speed rating for me to even feel remotely content keeping her to the inside. See, I'm going to pop the pocket now with her. And I'm just kind of going to move her up into the midfield. See what she does. She's got a long way to go. We're going to start to drive now. Um, where to go, where to go, where to go? I don't know. I'll just get her rolling. Actually, going to move her to the outside. Here we go. Roll, girl. Roll, girl. Come on. For a long left to go. Overwhipped. Ah, just overwhipped. I meant to only do one tap. Still going to be another top five finish. She is fast as a closer from the back, and that's going to be fourth. That's solid. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, fifth again? It looked like fourth on there. You know what? Whatever. It's fine. Um, we're supposed to finish third. Okay. Stretch wasn't good. I mean, yeah, I didn't really know where to go. I could have drifted her more towards the out. I wanted to try something out in that race. I wanted to see if I can make that move. I could make it, but it wasn't in enough time. So I, I definitely have to just keep her to the outside. There's not like a clear gap for her. Otherwise, I'll have to potentially deal with some traffic. God, Racer Jockey doesn't make sense. First, he's like, I don't know about this one. It, oh, it doesn't look like it's going to be very good. And now it's, oh, this one is steadily progressing. Like, make up your mind, bro. Make up your mind. Is my horse good or not? Not that I care about your opinion anyways. New poll. I forgot. Um, <laughs> we have a new baby. Welcome to the family. From uh, Mr. T and... No. This is Scabbit's first foal, right? It's a boy... 
Um, I don't know why I don't have it in my spreadsheet. I think it's Scabbard and Crimson Arts first fold, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so give me some time here. I'm trying to think of a name. I kind of want to keep the names for the, at least these first foals in, in the pedigree. I want to keep them similar to the parents. Then we'll branch out. So Crimson Art. He's a cult. I just thought about it. This is Crimson's... F or did I use Mr. T in Scavit? Eh, I know I can change the name. I can't remember if I use Mr. T or, or Crimson. I hope I use Crimson in, in Scavit. Yeah, I think I did Mr. T and Scotch Dancer, so I'm going to say Crimson Bot. <laughs> Sounds literally like a name that's already in the game. Um, actually, I have an idea. Uh, Arts of Crimson? I mean, it doesn't really pay any homage to Scabbit, but Scabbit's such a weird name. The only word in there you can use is Bot, and that just sounds weird, right? Uh, I keep doing that meaning to space, sorry. Art of Crimson. I'm gonna do that. I think that is pretty cool. And uh, finally, we get a boy. Like, we have... Okay, what? Doing the wrong thing, sorry. Um, like, we've had three gals, and finally, we get a cult here from Crimson Art. I'm hoping... I'm positive it should be Crimson. I hope it's not Mr. T. I don't know why I would have done Mr. T and Scavage first instead of Crimson and Scavage. That wouldn't make any sense. Art of Crimson. I actually like how that looks. It's different. Breeding season has begun. Of course, we're not going to be doing that because we don't have the space for it. No, that's a lie. I think... No, we don't. We don't even have the space for it. Oh, let's see. Yes, Crimson and Scabbit. Just wanted to make sure. Again, I don't know why I didn't even have that written in my notes. Oh, man. This horse is going to be amazing. Mind you. This horse is going to be amazing. Uh, because, you know, guys, what would also be a cool name since he's the cult and the son, Son of Crimson. Oh my gosh, if I can change his name, I would totally change it to that. Son of Crimson <laughs> from Crimson Art and Scabbit. This horse is going to be scary because Scabbit, as always, I've proven it over multiple games. She's a great broodmare. Most of us know this. So, Scabbit and Crimson Art. That horse is going to be amazing. Yeah, too many horses. I can't breed. I'd have to retire somebody. Um, I mean, like I said, Agent Daisy, I do want to see what she's going to develop into. I could get rid of her and make way. I don't want to give up on her, but from Agent Daisy, I really don't want that pedigree going around anyways. Can I get rid of her? Guess I'm changing my mind. I'm not going to use Agent Daisy because I don't even know why I really tried that breeding. Now, do we want to buy a... No, we're going to go ahead and breed. Because I do want to get something going here. So, Agent Daisy, goodbye. I know, we never got a win with you, but um, I want to breed. Yeah, I realized, I guess, that was something I wanted to do. <laughs> more than what we've been doing. Or at least what I was initially planning to do. So, yeah. Who to breed, though? That's the question. I did Scabbin and Crimson Art last year. Who else is still available that I haven't worked with? Scabbin and Mr. T. We could do that. Yeah, we could do definitely do Scabbin and Mr. T. Because, I mean, doing Scabbin and Crimson again. Like, I've bred Crimson with everybody I wanted to. Scabbit now. I've bred Crimson with Scotch Dancer, Dear Puffy, and Perfect Partner. I've bred him with all of our broodmares. Let's try Mr. T and Scabbit. Because like, there's no other horse I would even consider. Unless, you know what? I take that back. I take that back. I remember. Beginning of the video, I did say I was going to look for a cult, right? I have the space. I can look for a cult, and then I can retire him. I'm pretty sure. Because in this game, unlike 2004, you can actually retire these horses whenever you want, which is fantastic. So, that means if you're just over a horse, you can get rid of them. We have points to afford anybody we really want. Um... Are there any special? These are only two special horses. Flaring Arrow and gold, Global Stage. Your stamina is okay, bro. Tough? I do like that ability. I do like tough. Um, Gut's not good, though. Ugh. No, nah, I don't want that. Ooh. Flaring Arrow. Your stamina is eh. Your speed is really hot. 
Your feel, gut, and temper all suck in your response. What's your deal? Solo runner inflexible? Nope, don't like it. Uh, I didn't mean to go all the way back, sorry. Um, Those are the only two special horses for this moth? Like, if I don't... I'm just looking at colts I could buy. I don't have to buy one, but... Uh, hmm. I'm thinking about somebody else with scab it. A horse with good stamina. Absurd dream. Good guts and close race. Okay, strong heart. A what? Not, ev not even a thought. Not even a thought. Are you kidding me? I low-key want to race this horse. Absurd dream. I really do. But I also want to try something different for once. <laughs> oh, okay. I forgot. This is a thing. If I retired him, he would just be gone. He does have to hit his peak. That's fine. I mean, he's better than Agent Daisy would have been, unfortunately for her. This is fine. We, we, we can work with Absurd Dream. Um, no breeding this year, though. But uh, he's actually... The fact that I just kind of popped up on him, he's an ideal cult for me. Good speed. Good staying. Good stamina. Will break well. Mild-tempered. Very gutsy and a strong heart. This is literally like the epitome of a horse that I want in this game. So yeah, no breeding this season, which is fine. I think we've got enough to work with now. Um, absurd dream. Let's see what's up with you, man. You run 9 to 13 on the dirt. I'm going to toss him into a G1 the first chance I get, but... Run him on the dirt in Hong Kong. Let's see how he does there, but... um. Kind of excited for Absurd Dream. Honeybee, got to get you another win here. You're developing. You're getting much better. The win is coming. Another win is coming, I should say. She's got three, but we need more. We'd like to put her into grade one. Going to run her in that Regal S. Got to see what she's capable of. Maybe on a better track, too. It could actually suit us. Just thought about it, though. What's her power? Oh, her power is low. Scratch that. We'll struggle. Uh, that's a track, I think, in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Regal, where are you? Oh, Long Beach. Okay, never mind then. She might... I mean, Long Beach is still a pretty tough track, but she might be able to handle that. I need to see anyways, right? Any more races in April? Nope. Everybody's good till next month. All right. So no breeding this year. That's fine. I mean, I think this was the better long-term decision for us to make anyways. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I'm not upset about us uh, not being able to breathe because I think the move we just made much better and uh, much smarter, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, let's see how this works. Now everything is going well for Striking Moon. I'm over you, bro. I'm so over you, dude. So over you. <laughs> and you're absolutely obnoxious, annoying things that you say. So yeah, that was a much better play. Because I don't... The thing is, as much as I like to breed, I don't want to rush breeding if it's not legitimately like a good matchup. You know what I mean? Or if it's not the right circumstances. Absurd Dream. I didn't know he had blinkers. Heavy favorite. He's going to pay 50 cents to win. No surprise. This is a fantastic course already. It's rock and roll, man. It's rock and roll. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Away she goes with the record here. Seriously? You guys remember Away she goes. She's one of our first Gout Racer uh, created horses in this game. Was she really that fast here? I mean, she was decent. She was our first decent, like I said, original. Uh, created original in this game. Um, in fact, she set the record. That's okay. Cool. Cool stuff. The horses. So yeah, gotta remember, uh, any race we win, gotta save those replays, man. That'll make putting highlights together so much easier. That's, like, I want to do, like, a highlight for some other horses, like Mr. T and stuff, but I would have to rewatch all of my videos, which now at this point are, like, over two hours, or close to two hours. I'd have to rewatch those videos in their entirety just to wait for all those races to pop up. Cut out the races. You know what I mean? And then edit. I don't really want to do that. If anything, I just want to keep track of, like, my horse's stats more than anything. But that still will kind of require me to watch quite a bit of my tape. And it's just like, that's so time consuming. Now I'm going to wait with Absurd Dream here. Now we're going to roll. Easy trip along the rail. 
Strongheart, and Rebo. This horse is going to be dangerous. Absurd Dream is going to be dangerous. I'm going for the record. Absurd Dream is going to be dangerous, man. He's going to be a great sire for us. I can already tell. Uh, we're going to win a lot of grade ones with him. A lot of grade ones. Absurd Dream. I mean, I, I know this horse. I just never really thought about acquiring him. I just like that in some of these games that I'm playing, I'm finding different uh, good, you know, sires, essentially. Long-time sires that maybe everybody in the community is not familiar with. I, I don't want to just use the same horses as everybody else. Uh, there are a lot of horses in this game. So, forgot to save it. Uh, it's such a conscious thing. I have to be super conscious of that. Oh, that was a great first win. But, honestly, I only want to do highlights for, like, our created horses. I don't really want to do a highlight for just, like, an actual Gallop Racer original. I I'd rather do highlights for created horses. I think that's more special. To show that, hey, we created this horse and this is what it's been able to do. But, if I can remember, I will. But, I gotta just make more of a conscious effort. I'm just so in the mood of just racing and then just being on to the next. Now, I should still be trying to go for a title for him this year as well. What can I do for you? Because what's his distance? 9 to 13 on the dirt. So, dirt champ. What do we need for that? Win six G1 dirt races. Okay. It's not like there's a ton of dirt G1s to begin with. So, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Title. Can I get him best three-year-old Colt? Um, let's see. Blue, blue courses and distances are good matches. Okay, I forgot. Blue, they did say that. Anything highlighted blue means, okay, put your horse in this race. Yeah, I'm not really sure what title to go for with him. Um, let's see. Mid-champ, we could do that once he is able to run in grade ones, but there's like no grade ones available for him, so... Race him here in Miyajima. Miyajima in Hiroshima. Good wordplay there. All right, uh, let's do a quick save. Yeah, I'm just got to be conscious of saving, honestly. Uh, not used to doing that. Just wish you could just, yeah. I wish there was an easier way to, to save your replays, but I'll have to be mindful of it. I'll have to slow things down. I'm used to just kind of just going one race to the next, getting over with it. Now that I actually have to remember, oh, I should stop after the race and just like kind of read everything i'll remember regal s the regal stakes here in long beach a furlongs for honeybee um yeah she's not expected to finish in the money here today but i'm gonna try to um beat those odds a couple closers a couple closers and three of them have better odds than us so go the monsters in this field and she's the favorite naturally speaking Speaking of her, let's go ahead and look at Golden Monster, right? There she is, the beautiful Golden Monster. I didn't realize how much Absurd Dream looks like her, actually. <laughs> Golden Monster. She'll probably win this race. Actually, should, should I bet on her? I'm going to bet just a show. I know that seems ridiculous, but it's actually kind of a tough field. Which number was she? 11. It's a tough field. I'm going to bet on Golden Monster. There's no guarantee she'll win, as great as she is. She could very well lose to Flying Brian. Don't see that horse a lot. She could lose to him. Simple Cannon could surprise her. Sly Attack could get up there. So, yeah. Going to play, play it conservatively there. It's a beautiful day for racing. It actually is. Honeybee, it's her first test at the G1 distance, the G1 level. Um, I said, the, the, grade one level, Eric. What do you mean G1 distance? Like, the, doesn't matter what the distance is. Whether it's a grade one, grade three, doesn't matter. It's just about the level of competition. A, Perfect Dart has the record here. Our baby. There I go, just saying crap that makes no crap. sense. What's new, right? Honestly, like, what is new? Anybody that, like, comes to this channel is like, what is this guy saying? It's like, you haven't been here. You're already, like, out of the loop. No offense. <laughs> if you have to question the things I say, you're clearly out of the loop. Because everybody that's been here for longer than I think... <sighs> longer than even maybe, like, six months at this point. You all know 
I just say random crap. I make up random words. It's just what happens. But new people are like, oh, what's up with this guy, huh? What does he mean by that, huh? <laughs> it's like, come on. Loosen up. That's why I like to embrace being my silly self. Some people are just wound up way too tight. Like, I take things in life seriously, but, like, I don't... I'm not, you know, I don't have a stick up on you know what. Like, I, I can relax and have fun and be silly. Now, this is a pretty good run for Honey Bee. Oh, Rebo! Rebo! Let's kick! Oh, I can't move, though! Can I move? Oh, I can. Okay. Great! I didn't know we were gonna get a revolution with Honey Bee. Let's drive! We're approaching half a furlong left to go! This is gonna be a great performance. I wasn't even expecting the Rebo, man. She's gonna finish fourth in her first grade one, and we could have realistically won that if I was thinking about getting a revolution and having her in position. I wasn't even thinking. That's a that's a solid result there. We're supposed to finish ninth. She finishes fourth. Definitely saving that. I finally remember. Um, can I save this to my second memory slot? I can. 128 megabytes on this one, finally. I don't know why the original PS2s came with eight. So goofy. Yeah, we have a lot of space. Lots of space. Beautiful. Great result there. Actually, for um, Honey Bee, I was expecting that to be a lot tougher. Did we beat Golden Monster now that I think about it? Did she finish? Did she win? We beat Golden Monster. What happened to her? Did she get caught up in traffic? Wow. Well, no bet for me, but most importantly, Honey Bee. Great first time G1 performance there. She finishes fourth. Expected to finish out of the money. No surprise, she is Crimson Heart's daughter. Yeah, really good performance. Was not expecting that at all. Okay, in trust. That's all I'm doing. Like I just don't have the desire to do manual training. Could have done better, of course. Two stats in the 70s. I'll take it. Speed is almost... Speed and Stang will be at the 70s sooner than later. Another closer. Again, Striking Moon is from Undercover Agent out of Dear Puffy. Rest of the stats are bling. But uh, actually, the top five stats are pretty solid. Stamina is already better than most of our Gal Racer uh, created horses come out as. So, I'm actually cool with this. I, I, this is better than I thought. See, I do entrust training. We already have two stats in the 70s. Like, you know what I mean? Like whatever <laughs> all right striking moon you're ready to roll uh did we do his tack regiment what do i want him to focus on speed for sure we, we need speed stamina's not bad i could alternate between the two his guts rating is 44 that's only going to be so well i'm going to alternate between speed and stamina actually because um, everything else is... I actually like how he's looking. Feel, it's fine. Um, temper, it's fine. His guts, I wish that was better. Response is fine. And then health is not the greatest. So I'm assuming he's going to probably peak quickly. Or it's just going to take him longer to like race. And I keep selecting stamina. Didn't tell us. He does have stretch, bar uh, stretch burst. Rough is okay. So yeah, he should be pretty solid, honestly. Yeah, he should be pretty solid for us. No, I forgot. You design your horse's tack before they actually hit the track. Uh, for training. Duh. Alright, Striking Moon. You run 18, or excuse me, you run 8 to 12 uh, furlongs on Zitzef. On Zitzef. Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> We're running 11, Lavender. And then that open to see what he does. Honeybee, you are B-ranked. You're improving. Her speed jumped up four points in this episode. Remember at the beginning I said she was at 73. It's at 77 now. Yeah. Crimson's pedigree kicks in so strong when it does. It looks really slow in the beginning. And you're like, oh, did I make the right decision? Give it time. His pedigree kicks in. And you know what? I'm going to run her six furlongs at this Pluto. I know it's a little bit outside of her range, but considering her stamina is 59 and her speed is 77, she can win that grade one. That can be her first grade one win there. So yeah, see how she handles it. Do, 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 do. Perfect art, our baby. 
Hall of Famer. Which, actually, she will hit the Hall of Fame in this game. Now that I think about it, 10 G1, well, 11 G1 wins and almost 20 regular wins and a title? She's going to hit the Hall of Fame. She's up in the spring mile. She's not the favorite. She wasn't the favorite last time in the Royal Cup. We still got the W in the photo finish. It's a tough field, though. Pretty tough field, actually. Considering all the top horses. But, um... I mean, I top three with her, like, I can do that. We can win this race, most importantly. I think that's why she's so dominant. We've won a lot of races where we weren't the favorite with her. So, like, us not even being the favorite, it's not even, like, a big deal. I feel like that's actually how we've ran with her most of her career. The, the market... Let's be honest, the betting public and the market in this game, they are probably amongst some of the dumbest people on the planet because she has won 11 grade ones and they still don't have faith in her to that extent. It's so weird. It's as if they're jealous of my queen. Take it somewhere else. You can ignore the queen's greatness all you want, but the thing is the queen is still great and you cannot deny that. Yeah, half of you people out there. You know what? Maybe those people out there are more okay with her. Not all of them bet. Some of them literally just go to these races just to dress up and look nicely. So, half of that crowd maybe hasn't bet on her. Kramer's King with the record. I still want that horse. And the betting public in general just doesn't have faith in her. Despite that she's won 11 grade, one in, 11 grade ones in her career. It doesn't even make sense. And as always, she breaks out fantastic. Like, I don't even have to really fight with her to get to the front. She's out, and then she's gone. Okay, I'm just going to get her right up to this horse. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll stay tucked here. We'll pop this pocket as soon as we can. Hopefully, Kilera's up, though. But obviously, as a front runner, sticking to the inside is more likely to happen. So, like, I have to deal with it. But if I'm running on a closer like Honeybee half-sister of perfect art then yeah like i i'm gonna need to make sure i, I have the position to do it now her stamina is not looking great so i'm gonna move her here oh wait 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 actually here we go is her stamina gonna tap her stamina may tap here i think i ran her a little bit too heavy and i did oh it's a bummer i messed that up yeah i definitely gassed her way too soon uh, running her at the back. I could still run her almost as a mid. Mid-lead type. Like, I definitely can run her as a proceeder and win, but... Uh, ran her way too heavy there. And that's on me. I don't think it's, like... I, I don't think it's a result of, like, her being in a bad position as far as her ability. She's still clearly strong and healthy, but I totally botched that, so that's my fault. I'll have to be more mindful of that next time out. But um, it doesn't take away what she's accomplished in her career. That, that, that's a jockey era race. It has nothing to do with the horse. Her speed was in the 80. Did it really drop that quickly? I still would try to like to go for another title for her, but... Her speed, I swear, was in the 80s. How did it drop four points that quickly? Summer Sprint, I did say I want to get her in that. We'll have to nail that. Can't afford to have any mishaps, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, on to the next. Bad race. We'll forget about it. We'll bounce back, and we'll try to win that uh, race. In fact, if she doesn't win that G1, then I'm definitely retiring her. I thought about trying to maybe go for more titles, but maybe not the best idea. Maybe not. We'll see how that race goes, but it might be the better idea to retire her. But I still think she can win G1s. That's why I'm conflicted. But we'll see. Anyways, it's her dream. Favorite in today's G3. And Miyajima at Hiroshima. Um, yeah, that, that, that was intentional awkward silence. Because I really wanted that to sink in for, for everybody listening. <laughs> they really, I mean, come on. They knowingly put this race on this track together. All right, let's rock and roll. Ah, 
Not a great start, but it's okay. I do like the detail and the different backgrounds of these tracks in this game. I think that's a cool touch. You're going to run outside just to run inside. Goofy Gallop Racer AI logic behavior that will never, ever make any sense. And why are we still running this far? Oh, I forgot. Uh, dirt tracks with these uh, turns are so tricky, man. They're really, really tricky to navigate. Okay. This is good. This is good. Look at the skyline back there. Look at the crowd. Look at those apartment buildings. Can you imagine? I would love to literally have my apartment building across from the racetrack. That's like the greatest thing ever. But conveniently, of course, racetracks, at least here in the States, usually are built away from like any major apartment buildings or residential like uh, buildings. I wonder if that is because they just don't want people like not it's it's goofy it's a lot of tracks i've been to like that i mean i don't think it would be to keep people from coming to the track that'd be kind of weird wouldn't it what is going to happen here okay we do get strong art great still driving still driving i mean we're going to get the win it's a little bit tough navigating there but sir dream is a strong horse there's the stride and he's gone he is gone to the wire we come in first person Good win there for Absurd Dream. Two for two. Yeah, he's going to be a great sire as well. Cannot wait to see what we get from him. Cannot wait. Let's go. Good win. Good win. Good money. And uh, a good win. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be taking a short break in the rec Well, actually, after this G1 race, I'll take a break. And we'll be back. But let's get this race done with first. Honeybee, she's up. Not good odds, uh, but I know she can finish much stronger than I did last time out. Uh, let's just head into the race. I don't really need to worry about anybody else in this field. I need to run my own race. She came close at that uh, Regal S in Long Beach. She came really close to actually winning if I would have... Wow. It skipped the animation since when? I mean, the uh, the intro, introduction, whatever. Uh, the great thing about this race is we're all on the straight. I shouldn't have to worry about anybody moving in, necessarily. So, as long as I get her started at the right time. Her feel is a little bit off. It is quite tricky to get her into the right area. You know what I mean? Like, she'll over-respond when I try to get her moving. Okay, let's go. We got a long way to go. Long way to go. Let's go with Honeybee. Two furlongs left. Let's see how she fights. Her stamina is dropping really fast. She's still there, though. Does she have enough to still get there at the end? Okay, we're going to whip search. Let's see what she does. She's still fighting. She's going to finish better than 10th. That's really all that matters. That's all that matters. That's a top... That's six. Just missed the... Just miss. Excuse me, the top five. Wanted to see what she can do. That That's a good indicator of her future. I don't think she's quite ready for these races yet. Final movie sets the record, of course. But um, that's her second G1. She's finished better than the, than the market expected her to. So that's a good sign. She's definitely going to take off her five-year-old season. I'll use the remainder of this year to probably just stick her to G3s, G2s, and non-special grade ones. The fact that she did that well in special grade ones kind of leads me to believe she'll actually win a grade one once we get her there um so yeah i did say i was going to take a break i will do that i'll save we'll go ahead and take a break and then we'll come back for the last hour uh, of this episode um so stay tuned youtube what's going on we are back uh i put honeybee in a super mile cup in august part of the gws we'll see how she handles that if anything else doesn't pop up before then, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah. Sir Dream's up there for three-year-old dirt, and that's all we got. Fair play. Let's go race. Think we're on Striking Moon, I hope. No, Sir Dream in the Tokyo Derby. That's right. I'm throwing him in his first grade one, and we're we are still the heavy favorite. 
Perfect voice is here with the long shot. Why is he the long shot? That's weird. Perfect voice is a pretty good dirt horse. I had him in 2004 and we won quite a bit with him. I mean, I'm pretty sh That's Great Bolero's father. Why is he... Don't know why he's a long shot here today. Uh, not my problem, though. We'll go ahead and bet on ourselves here for Sir Dream. Go ahead and bet the win place and the show. Because uh, despite the money conditions, we should be able to hold off here. And um, get this win. And then get him his first grade one win. Good thing is he's already at his peak or already in his prime. I don't know when his peak is going to hit. I should look at his growth chart. So, uh, yeah. This race usually isn't muddy for me. This is one of the first times I've done this derby in years in this game. Where it's actually muddy. Like, it's always dry. Always, always dry. So a muddy Tokyo Derby here. An absurd dream is ready to roll. Let's get to it. Almost a perfect start. We'll take it. And we're off in the muddy Tokyo Derby. Absurd dream. He's going to rock it out to a decent start here. And they're just going to move into the inside. But overtake a couple of forces here. There's perfect voice. I don't know why you are the long. Why I don't know why you're a long shot. Number eight, right in front of us here, to the right. No idea why you're the long shot. Strangest thing ever. Okay, we gotta get him in a better position here because like these horses are actually ahead of us. But like I can't really do anything. Watch out! Didn't even bump that horse, bro. Yeah, this is. They just they they just decided to stay five wide there when they simply could have. Somebody could have moved in. Okay, we're getting him moving up. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. My goodness. This game is this game is a little bit ridiculous with that. It's like, he'll be okay. Relax. <laughs> he or she will be okay. Whatever horse you're, you know, you're riding on. We're fine. They can go now. That's fine. That's fine. Here we go. Let's work him. Yes, sir. Strong heart. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Sir Dream digging in. Muddy old, muddy old Tokyo Derby. There we go. A muddy old Tokyo Derby. It's a muddy Tokyo Derby. But most importantly, it's the first grade one win. He's three for three for Sir Dream. Already going for three-year-old Colt. Because he's not four, right? He's three. He's already going for three-year-old Colt of this year. And maybe a dirt title if we can get there. This is the first of several dirt title G1 wins we'll need. But that is a great first win for Absurd Dream. Wow, impressive power. Great first win. Let's go. First G1 win, I should say. There it is. There it is. Let's just keep it as simple as that because um, it's one of many to come. So I know I should feel special and... Do I want to save that replay? You know what? I will. I will save that for Absurd Dream. Because I don't know how good he's going to be. And like I said, I have the space. I might as well just um, save whatever I want to save. See, this is what I realistically wish I was doing with my races on my older videos. You know, obviously a while ago. So I could have the highlight for some of those greater horses. But again, I just started... Did I bet on the wrong horse? <laughs> I Who did I bet on? <laughs> what the F? <laughs> who did I bet on? Why didn't I bet on myself? Oh my gosh. I'm just stepping in it today. Like, I just keep making just goofy mistakes. I'm not even thinking half the time. Today is just one of those days. It's like a weird, like, I'm not really thinking about things type of day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Whatever. Would have been nice to get the bet, but we, I mean, whatever. Nothing I can do. On to the next. Just, ah, so stupid. Perfect art. Summer sprint. Long shot. Wow. They're giving her no chance today. Maybe it is time to hang it up for her. I would say if she doesn't get a top five, then yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and say this will be her send-off. 
Because uh, maybe as soon as I lost that race with her, instant decline. Instant decline. Still such an amazing gal. Yeah, her, yeah, her stats have dropped tremendously. Whoa. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. I, I've i never had a horse that's had such a major drop-off so quickly, you know? So, wasn't really expecting that, but it's good that I know now. It's very good that I know. Okay, don't run too heavy, please. You did that last time, and it did not help us. In fact, I'm just going to run her as uh, mid here. I did say I was going to do that anyways. I think this is the best chance she'll have. But, uh, yeah, her st I've never seen a, a created horse's stats drop so quickly when they're past their peak. That's like, wow. It is literally like a major drop-off. Now, she has heart, so I don't have to get her going just yet. Now I can get her going. Now let's see what she looks like. See what she looks like here in her last grade one. The GWS is going to be tough. But as long as she beats a couple of horses, I'm okay. And as always, she's still going to fight as strong as she can. Still going to get... Maybe close. Nope. Was it the top 10 finish, though? It was 11th. Probably worse or just about where we were supposed to be. But you know what, man? Oh, we're supposed to finish 13th. Second to last. Okay. That's a good send-off. Not the best, but her career will speak for itself. Uh, when she peaked, she peaked really quickly. As far as uh, once she was at that plateau, that was it for her. Because, yeah, it's not going to be possible to win those races anymore, unfortunately. And she retires as a C-ranked horse. That's like 11 G1s, 18 wins as a C-ranked horse. is unbelievable, man. Not even the best of what we can do. Have I saved her yet? Um, I'll save her on memory card slot one because, yeah, she's on that one. Okay. Retire, you beautiful thing, over Agent Daisy or Red Daisy, whatever. You gotta go. A for rank. I didn't get anything about the Hall of Fame, though. So how does Hall of Fame work in here? I thought you just needed a title. I thought you just needed a title to enter your horse into the Hall of Fame. Like, I have my titles here. But, like... Isn't there, is there not a Horse Hall of Fame? Or is the Hall of Fame different in this game? So it appears the Hall of Fame in this game is now like 2004? Where you guys see the horses themselves? It just gives you the title that you've earned. And you can't even tell who earned that title unless you remember and then your G1s. Interesting Hall of Fame. That's a little bit disappointing. I didn't realize it didn't actually... So your horses themselves can't actually enter the Hall of Fame in this game. They can earn you titles and stuff, but they can't actually enter the Hall of Fame themselves. That's a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is, right? We can't do anything about that. Um, I've extended everything here, so our facilities are top-notch. It's also why like, I don't really feel like I need to do the manual training. Our facilities are all fantastic right now, so I think we're okay. Um... Oh, you know what? I want to see... I know it was just A. Should have been an S, honestly, but let's see. What are her classifications? Okay, A and S. Actually, classification is what I was thinking. I knew they may not have given her double S just because I guess she's a created horse for this time being. I know we'll eventually get a created horse at double S, but the game just always is more likely to give an original a double S. So, S classification for perfect art, A for her uh, eval. Um, so traits we know are going to pass on, uh, from her. As far as what we're seeing, her speed should pass on if I breed her with the right sire. Um, her speed, her guts, her response, and her health. Finally, uh, a horse with those three good stats in that regard. So I'm thinking of breeding perfect art. And then Absurd Dream, whenever I can retire him. I don't really want to breed her, breed her with any of those sires already in there. A stud's in there, I should say. I really don't. Absurd Dream, when are you supposed to peak? That's the real question. Growth type is average. You're three years old. So you'll peak, like, at the end of next year? <sighs> hmm. 
To be honest, since he has good stats, and I was initially planning... Well, now I think about it, I can't retire him until the game says he's at his peak anyways. So I'll just have to wait. I want to breed Perfect Art and uh, Absurd Dream next year if I could, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. We do have space to buy another horse, but I don't want to. Because um, unless I see somebody I really want, Aunt B, I'm not dealing with you again. And actually, we need a we need a horse with really really good stamina, man. Like really 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 good stamina. Cutting Crystal, who are you? You have the speed I adore. Your staying is good. Your stamina is not bad. Your power is solid. Your response is great. Your guts are okay. Close race and spurt. Cutting Crystal. It's another really, really good speed horse, but that's the thing. I feel like we already have speed. We really need stamina. Empty tree. Like, these horses are going to be good, but we need stamina in these lines. I want to see a horse with, like, 70 stam. Like, Vivid Legend. Look at that response. Look at the distance. Look at the growth type. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get it. That's literally exactly the horse I wanted. I've spoken into existence. See, manifestation does work. It's not some kooky stuff. It, it works, man. Or it was just convenience for me. Pfft, doesn't really matter. Er, let's see here. With Vivid Legend, I'll run him in an open seven furlongs. Let's see how he handles that distance. I'm trying him out at a quicker race, despite him being a long distance runner. Well, the simple fact that uh, I just want to get the feel for him in an open, even if it's a shorter distance. See, I could have put him in a grade one for his first time out, but I don't know what he's going to run like. But, undercover, or excuse me, Striking Moon is making his debut. Decent odds here today on opening day for him. He can finish in the money. Decent odds. Let's take a look at you. Again, Striking Moon is from Undercover Agent out of Deer Puffy. So he should be pretty strong. We gave him the black and white leg wraps uh, with the black. Oh, excuse me, yeah. Purple, black and white leg wraps, I think. Or it's just purple and white. And then uh, he obviously has the white shadow roll, black a hood with a yellow um, moon, obviously for striking moon there. So I think he looks absolutely amazing. I'm hoping he turns out to be a pretty fun and a good racehorse. He looks good. His speed has already hit 70. Uh, it wasn't at 70 prior to coming here. Now it is. He's got three stats in the 70s. Stang will be joining that as well. So we'll see what he's capable of. He is a closer and he has stretch burst, which is good. Stamina is not terrible. So he should be okay. I mean, he should really be okay. We should be able to get a couple G1s with him over his career, at the least. He's a little bit mild tempered. Yeah, well, not mild tempered, but his temper is not the greatest. But I'll work with it. It's fine. And Gallup Racer commentator, please don't say, "Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, hey, you over there? What are you doing?" So yeah, he doesn't look bad. But yeah, his temper is a little bit of an issue. I already feel it. Not just from the start, but like even trying to get him to the speed I want him to be at. He's already kind of fighting with me. <laughs> so, he has good stamina remaining though. Plenty of stamina here since we've had to run him really far back. Let's get him going now. Got to really drift him out. We have a long way to go. Oh, over whipped. Gosh dang it. I actually I always end up doing that. Ah, over whipped again. Why do I keep doing that? There is Stretch Burst, and that came in at the great time because that helped us. Oh, we could have finished so much better. I, just... Yeah, that's... He feels he feels really good outside of where I messed up. He feels really, really good, honestly. So, he'll be fine. We finished 6, and we were supposed to finish 6. We hit our goal, and that's on a mess up, which means I really could have won that race. Um, yeah, he runs really strong from the back once he's in deep stretch, though. But he is a handful to fight on the way down there. But I can work with it. He reminds me of Aunt B, to be honest. Like, Aunt B's temper never drove me mad. It, it could get irritating at times, but I was never like, oh, your, her stamina is so bad I can't deal with you. I don't feel that way with him. Not in the slightest. He, he actually feels okay. Yeah, he does feel okay. Um, again, in, in another open. But yeah, he actually feels pretty good considering. Vivid Legend, yeah, we really just snatched him up. Like, that's a great pickup because he's a really good horse in this game. So, yes! Beautiful stuff.
Again, another good cult, this time with stamina. <laughs> Finally start breeding that into the line. Striking Moon, he's up again. Better odds. We got to get the win. We're the fourth favorite here. Perfect art? What? What? No, that, that's going to be another horse named Perfect Art. It can't be my baby. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way, bro. I'm like, how did they how did they get my horse? This is not 2004, where you lose your horses and you race against them. I'm like, how did they get her? That didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, this game doesn't work like 2004. Like, you can't race my horse. Oh, that's hilarious. That's actually funny. Duh, Perfect Art is a very common name. I mean... They probably had a generator for these games right in the late 90s, early 2000s. They just put a whole bunch of names in there and boom. Kind of like how we decide our horse names. They probably just had like a massive generator, which makes sense. Bad Pack. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he's really a mild. Yeah, he has a hot temper for sure. He does not like a lot of things. All right. Let's get him moving now. He's got plenty of stamina left to go. Got to get him moving. Ah, tough track though. Tough track tough track we could not hit that like i wanted to that was very tough that was very tough but he's moving through he has some space here it's a good showing for striking moon very good showing and we're gonna get up there to finish second we weren't gonna catch the leader but that, that's a good run he's looking pretty strong man he's looking pretty strong i have to say he feels strong we look awesome with him i think our color combo is looking nice i'm finally making usage of the purple black and yellow don't know why I went with that, but I think with Striking Moon on us, or us on Striking Moon, supposed to finish fourth, to finish uh, second, save this a slot too. Yeah, that was a really solid race for him. We were never going to catch the leader, no matter how fast we were. Um, it was hard to run that, run that turn. So I'm going to have to be more mindful of that with him. Um, yeah, but he has the speed. Clearly, the leader Happy Trial was just. I mean, a happy trial wasn't going to be caught anyway, so. The win is coming, and G1s will follow shortly after. I, I like Striking Moon. He definitely has a, tamp a temper from, um, I think, Dear Puffy. Yeah, Dear Puffy was a spicy gal, as Abigail likes to say. Um, she was spicy. Her son inherits that, but I can work with it because he feels great already. I like the way he feels. And this temper rating is not even that bad. It's only 45. That's the strange thing. It's not even a bad rating, but it's definitely there. For well, I'm in a grade 3. I think he's clearly ready for that. Alright. So I guess my goal in this video is just to get to the end of the year, pretty much. Who is this? Vivid Legend. Got it. I'm like, who's this basic horse with no tack, no nothing? <laughs> It's Vivid Legend. He's a favorite. I should have bet it is what it is. There's really no point. Like, I don't... I've bought... I've upgraded all my facilities. I don't... What else do you use G's for in this game? There's points which you use to buy your horses, and then there's the G's you use to upgrade the facilities. All my facilities are upgraded to the max. What else can I even use that money for? Yeah, I think betting is, like, pointless. Like, I could do it just for the fun of it, and I may do that eventually. But, um... But yeah, like, there's actually nothing to use my money for anymore, so it's fine. Yeah, Vivid Legend. I can't believe I actually snatched him up. He's a horse I've always seen. A horse I've always known was good. Um, I never really thought about actually trying to look for him in, in, in the shops, though. I didn't realize he was actually a good stamina horse, so that is also a thing. I just, I really just got into, like, liking stamina horses recently. I've always been more of a speed guy myself. But the stamina has just now kicked in. So um, I guess I'll be saving his replays too because he could turn into an amazing horse for us. Because despite the fact that we're at year 20 in this game, we are not where we are in 2004 where it comes to like, the quality of horses. We're definitely much further behind in this game because for one, this game I think is a lot tougher to play. Especially on the hardest difficulty. Um, two, you're limited with the amount of horses you can breed and have each season, right? Yahoo! So, 2004, you're able to go as much as you want to go, essentially, and you can have 15 horses at the same time. This game limits you. So, um, we're still pretty early on, I should say, in terms of, like, our dominance and, you know, having 
special, special horses. We've only had a couple in this series. We've had a bunch over on the 2004 playthrough. But in this game, we've only had a couple of really special horses. So I think even saving these replays for some of these originals, when I think about it, on this game, it works. I wouldn't be doing this on 2004. But in this game, because we still haven't gotten like a ton of special horses, I think it's important to keep um, track and footage of the great horses like your Vivid Legend, um, your Absurd Dream, these horses that are going to create really powerful lines for us, you know. I think it's important to keep them now in, in the recent memory. So that's a good win for Vivid Legend. No shocker. Um, what title can I go for with him? Any G1s? 9 to 16. I mean, he's a stamina horse, the fog. Mm. Dublin. I mean, he has decent speed. Yeah, he has decent speed. He should be able to handle a 7 furlong race. I know it's going to be more of a sprint, but with his stamina, and he has above average speed, he, he could do well. Not saying we'll be the favorite, but we'll see how he runs there. I, it's a lot harder to keep track of titles in this game. I wish like there was a, a thing that you could look at in your horses to see what titles they're eligible for, but of course that's a mechanic they wouldn't have thought about back then. And it's one us to do all the research. Anyways, Honeybee, she's up in another grade one super mile cup in Normandy. It's a very, very, very tough race, but um, she's defied the odds every time. So I'm not really worried about us not having a chance to finish in the money. I definitely have to be a little bit quicker on the spurt. She's not tiring out. She's catching half of the field because they're just gone by that point as far as their stamina is concerned. And she's been saving a whole bunch of ground at the back. So um, we certainly have to get her going a lot sooner here today. But let's get rocking and rolling with Honeybee. It's a beautiful day for racing. She looks ready to go. As always, she always looks ready to go. I love that she prances essentially everywhere she goes. Very pretty lady she is. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay. Just want to make sure we save as much stamina with her as possible. They're moving in, even though this is all on the straight. I mean, I get it. I, I, I know they do this in real life, but still. The tracks like these actually exist for thoroughbred horse racing. Some of them remind, like tracks like these, where it's like a extremely, extremely long straight. I've definitely seen races like this in Australia for thoroughbred okay, racing. I used to watch it all the time a couple years ago. I forgot what track, but um, yeah, I, I always, I mean, I worked during the day, so, or yeah, I worked during the day, so I always stayed up at night, um, usually depending on my shift time, but I got to watch that a lot. Now, let's see what she does. Knock on, over whip. Look at her speed already. She is running these horses down, is Honeybee. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this spurt from Honeybee. She's still driving, she's still driving, and again, we were supposed to finish 11th or something? We'd get up there for a third place finish. <sighs> Honeybee is fast, and I could have done better. I got distracted in my thought talking about, you know, Australian horse racing tracks, and yeah, I totally, the, the race was going at 2.8, and I'm like, oh crap, it's time to roll here. Yeah, we finish 8th. I mean, we're supposed to finish 8th, we finish 3rd. I'll save that. These races are important, because once she starts winning, it's like you're going to see the progression of like, okay, she's getting closer, she's getting closer, she's getting better, and then boom, she takes off. You know what I mean? She takes off. The thing is, with this pedigree from Crimson Art, they have such raw talent, and it just takes them a bit longer to tap into it. They have like super, super raw potential. And some horses just are able to tap into it instantly, and some horses really have to take time to develop it. You know what I mean? And that's the type of horse she is. That's the type of horse Perfect Art was. Great stuff there for Honeybee. Her speed's almost 80. Her stamina's in the 60s. She's looking fantastic. All she needs is a grade one win now. That's all she needs. That's all my lady needs is a grade one win. Looking for it. 
Uh, I'm going to run her in that Sprinter's Cup. She can do it. All right, we'll be taking a short break and get into our next race. Recording again, top to bottom. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, we're back here. G3 in Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for Striking Moon. Still good odds. He, he feels good, like I said. I The win is coming for sure. Win is definitely coming. He's got a temper I have to manage, but it's, it's not... It's not demotivating me. It's not turning me away from not wanting to, to really work with him. I, I'm willing to put up with this temper because I'm telling you, he, he really feels like a strong horse, especially in deep stretch. But to fight him a little bit the earlier course of the race, but again, it's not it's not impossible to, to manage him. You know what I mean? Certain horses, their temper is so bad, I just can't work with them at all. He's not that type of horse. He just requires a little bit more attention. You know, it's literally it. Just a little bit more attention, but he, he's honestly pretty solid. To work with so we'll keep him here at the front when i say the front i mean the front of this horse behind us not like uh it'll matter if we have him drop off but ideally that's where i wanted to keep him these turns as always are going to be a little bit tough to ride but he's saving good ground the only problem with a horse that runs like this as a real closer hey, is, is um one. like i said the inside now fortunately on this track i can move him to the outside um, no idea what just happened to my computer. The screen just went black. That kind of freaks me out. So we'll get him going. Have to get him going. Now we got to roll. Here we go. Two furlongs left to go with Striking Moon. I have to make sure I mon manage that stamina, but he's already tearing the field up. A furlong left to go. He's still driving. Still driving really strong. We're not going to get there for the win, but it's another good result. It's going to be really, really close. Another third place. He's strong, man. I had him way, way, way too far back. Way, way, way too far back. That was the problem. Sometimes I just don't get going early enough. We were way too far. We were way too far back um, on that occasion to, to have a chance at winning. But uh, <laughs> he is he's fast in the stretch, I'm telling you. He's, he's a heck of a horse to ride on. It's, it's, it's 
kind of feels like it's like a skydiving type of thing. It's like an adrenaline rush because, yeah, he lags a little bit in the earlier stages of the race. He's a little bit tricky to work with. But once he's in deep stretch and he knows it's time to go, I mean, my goodness. Like, literally strap on your seatbelts because uh, he's just going to absolutely floor it, man. He's got a lot of speed in there, I'm telling you. There's a lot of speed in Striking Moon. We're going to get you a win. It's three races. Uh, two results already in the top three. The win is coming. I guess I just I need to keep him a little bit closer. I know he runs as a closer. I could probably still run him closer to mid. I want to put him in a grade two. I want to see how he handles that field, though. We'll step him up two grades in competition. I'm sure he'll, like I say, we're going to win grade ones with him. It's not like he's not capable of that. But we're still taking our time. Anyways, uh, Absurd Dream, not the favorite here today. Pretty tough field in the first stakes in New York. Nine furlongs on the dirt. This game, um, horses, like the favorites don't win as often as they do in Galt Racer 3, right? So usually when you're dealing with the favorite in Gallup Racer 3, the favorite wins. But in these games, it's a lot more flexible. So I don't really look at worrying about certain horses in this game as much as I do in Gallup Racer 3 because I know the favorite has a higher probability of winning in that game. But in these games, the favorites often you can see fall out of the top five. So that's why I don't really look at the rest of the fields because I'm like, any one of these horses with decent odds could win. And it happens often. All right, pretty good start here for Absurd Dream in this great... I love these tracks. They're very realistic. I like that the different dirt tracks in here from, like, North America to Asia, there's actually a visible difference of the dirt. This is how most North American tracks, especially hey, in the States, look on Watch dirt out. surfaces. Didn't mean to bump. That's my fault. And then the, uh, the tracks in Asia, their dirt surfaces are a lot more kind of light brown, more of almost a sandy brown. Um, or like a light, light sand. Almost like a white sand. That's how their dirt looks. So I like that these games really took these type of track services into consideration. It just adds more to the to the realism of those tracks. Especially if you know the tracks okay. that you're racing on. Race so. so I'm going to move and keep them outside here. You can do whatever you want to do. We're fine. We're fine. We'll get him going now. Get him going now. Good run. Good run. Strong heart from Sir Dream. Can we catch those horses at front? Up front, though, maybe not. Will they tire out? Push through, bro. Oh, this is a tough race. This field is not giving. If you guys think this is an easy race, it's not. I promise you. Oh, wow. That was a really tough race. We still finished fifth, but my gosh. Sixth, no. That was a tough race, man. Every horse in that... This is what I mean. Like, that was a the second favorite one. Favorite came in first, whatever. Horse, yeah. That, that was a tough... That was a tough race. That was a tough race. Those horses were tough. Not a great stretch. Probably should have gotten them going a little bit sooner, naturally. But that was still going to be tough to win. It was still going to be pretty tough to win, honestly. Supposed to finish third, we finished sixth. Yeah. Not ideal, obviously. Uh, seven stats in the 70s, or above 70. No, that's fantastic. Soccer Derby, I know he's not ready for it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Because um, we've won a dirt, I mean, we've won a G1 with him already. We won uh, the Tokyo Derby. So if I could get him two G1s on dirt. That'd be a good good uh, chance for a title down the line. So I'm trying to remain conscious of that. But uh, on to Vivid Legend. Not the favorite. Captain Wave is. Who is Captain Wave? Lovely report. I, these horses, like, I don't see winning against me. Well, watch out for them, uh, naturally. Let me see. Love your report, okay, you're basic. Where's Captain Wave? You both are basic, but apparently the betting public thinks you're better than Vivid Legends, so okay, we'll see. 
We shall see. It's a beautiful day for racing. We shall see indeed. The horses are on the track. All right, Vivid. Got to get you your first G1, sir. Let's make it today. Let's make it today. Scotch Dancer. She has the record here. She's still in our breeding barn as we speak. Great start. Let's go, my boy. Okay, just kind of settle in. Oh, I like that birthmark on his head. I couldn't tell if that was like the reflection of the sun or if it was actually his birthmark. I love horses with that. I love dark horses with that type of birthmark. I know he wants to be closer towards the front. It's fine. Don't say, hey, what are you doing? You over there, what are you doing? You're not playing the game right. Hey, what are you up to? Why aren't you playing the game the way we want you to play the game? That's basically what they put that in there for. They tell you, hey, you're not playing the game right. It's like I'm playing the game fine. I'm playing it in my own way. That's the difference. I'm not playing it how the manual tells me to play the game. Or FAQs. Often, I, I will sometimes see comments like that. People telling me to play this game literally how it's written in, in the manual. I don't like playing the game like that. I don't care if it leads to less success. It's just not enjoyable. Good run here for Vivid. Oh, overwhipped him. Overwhipped him. But no, he's gone. He's gone. Holy cow. Vivid Legend destroys this field. Wins his first G1. No kidding. With the name Vivid Legend, that should happen. He reminds me of Crimson Art. I gotta tell you. He reminds me a lot of Crimson Art. Holy cow. Yeah, he reminds me. Of, he looks like Crimson and reminds me a lot of Crimson. Just another great stud that's going to be added to the already solid list of studs that we have. I guess there was more different animations to do. You know what I mean? I'm always pointing at the camera because, you know, that is something I'd probably do. If I'm winning on these horses, I'm like, yo, I see you guys. <laughs> Supposed to finish third, we finish first. Vivid Legend. Just, I mean, come on. I over whipped and he still destroyed that field. Oh my gosh. Yeah, great pickup. Why have I not done that sooner? Thought about it sooner? Don't know. Great G1. That's our fourth G1 on the year, I think. So we're killing it. Naturally. Naturally, I don't don't want to settle for anything less. I will get my grade threes and my grade two wins, of course. You know, I'm a big advocate of that. But, like, if I have a G1, I, the goal is to win. Unless it's just to test a horse if they're young. But, yeah, the goal is always to get the dubs. All right. My gosh, man. What a horse. Already cannot wait to use you for breeding. But we still have... Can he run it? Nah... Uh, I don't want to run him on dirt. You can run him in the Dinib. I've never even heard of that race. What? In Paris. Okay. Yes. Crim uh, not Crimson. Vivid. Crimson Art. Vivid Legend. Similar names. Similar horses. I don't think that's by design, Doyle. Let's get a quick save here. Uh, the goal is still to get to the end of this year in this video. Otherwise, it wouldn't really make sense to start a new one. So this may just be like one of those two and a half hour videos, which I know me personally, if I'm a viewer, I'm loving it because uh, myself as a YouTube viewer myself, I love when my favorite streamers or YouTube content creators upload two and a half hour videos. Like I love it. Like, like my favorite content creator of all time, none of you probably would know who he is, but um, he uploads, now he uploads like two and a half hour videos regularly and um, he'll upload all of his live streams. So. I enjoy that so much because I'm a binge watcher, you know, when you like to watch, when you like to just binge watch your content, you could care less if it's 10 hours long. You're going to binge it that whole time. So anyways, Osaka Derby here with Absurd Dream. He's actually the favorite, despite the fact that he's in green conditioning. But I mean, it's not a tough field. No offense. Irish Dancer. Okay. Dandy Crystal. You're all right. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. If this was a tougher field, there's no way we'd be the favorite. No disrespect to Absurd Dream, but it's like it's really not a tough field. You know what I mean? So, this will be his second G1 win. We need to get him this win because I messed up the last G1 with him. So, let's get this done. The horses are on the track. 
Yeah, let's get the win here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it done. Perfect start. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely have to get him going at the right time. He's not like Vivid Legend. I think Vivid Legend could make a comeback even if he's fighting from a while away. Which he technically did, actually. That's hey, how he won that G1. Doing? But uh, Absurd Dream, I don't think he's that type of horse. I think he's like a utilize his speed when you're supposed to utilize his speed at the right time. And um, get him going sooner than later. Vivid Legend is like you can wait a bit. Striking Moon, I can wait. Absurd Dream, I don't feel like is that type of horse for me. So I just got to get him going a little bit sooner. And I'm keeping them here to save stamina. I know he's supposed to be running, what, two or three lengths further ahead? Uh, no. Nah. We're going to save ground. Five furlongs to go. Just working the horse behind me. I'm going to move him in. A little concerned about his stamina, though. But, I mean, I think okay, we're okay. This is where the race is won. We are the favorite here in this Osaka Derby. We should be fine. Just going to make sure something clears up for us. Nothing's clearing yet. Please move. Please move. Okay, we got to get him going. Please move. Thank you. My gosh. Here we go. Come on, absurd. You got to work, brother. You got to work today. You got to work. You got to work. You shouldn't have to, but you are. Who is the two? The two got blocked. The two got blocked, and we're still, we still can't beat the five. Wow. Yeah, I got to get him going sooner, I know. But my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Photo for what? We didn't win that race. So much for not a tough field, eh? Two got blocked. Two was going past all of us. Who was that? Irish, well, I mean, I, I did give Irish Dancer credit. and I didn't disrespect that horse, but my goodness. Bad positioning, bad stretch, yeah. Thought I could run him kind of behind the field a little bit. Use his speed. Can't do it. I cannot do that. I blew two easy grade ones for him. Despite the fact that he has an 85 guts rating, but his response is 59. So it takes him longer to kind of get the signal. But yeah, his guts is there. But again, it's it's the response that I'm messing up at. For him to get the top speed, it's just too late by the time he's rolling. Okay, okay, okay. That will not happen again. We'll get him in the independence. Will not happen again. I mean, the races I've won with him so far, I've won them at the front. And I've... And he has gotten a G1. It's not as if I haven't won a grade one with him. You know what I mean? It's just uh, those last two races, I just... Yeah. He could not handle being behind the field and then still trying to hold out. Or, or trying to catch up, I should say. He's not that type of horse. Despite the fact that his stats say that, it's not working. I have to actually keep him out in front by the time we hit that final straight. And then he's good to go. Or at least close, like literally right by those horses. But I've been having him at least three lengths off the leaders, and then he just can't rally to get them. Honeybee's up in the Sprinter's Cup. She's not the... F no, she's the favorite today. About darn time. Put some respect on my baby's name, okay? Because, yeah, we're close. We've been close. It's coming, and she is fast. She's really fast. She's the favorite... It's a, it's a tough field, though. I mean, my gosh. Four of us could finish at the... Five of us could finish literally at the wire. And the other two are, could be right there with us. It's going to be a tough race, but she can get it done, man. She can certainly get it done. Let's go for Honeybee. It's a beautiful day for racing. It is a beautiful day for racing. The horses are on the track. And if you didn't know, the horses are profoundly on the track. Like, what? Sprinter's Cup. Let's see who has the record here, because I can't remember. It's probably one of my horses we've had in this game, and it's, it's not. It's Powerful Men. I've never had that horse. But I see it pop up often, so eventually, if I see that horse in the shop, I'm going to get it. Because I see it on quite a couple of tracks' records. So that tells me speed. Speed tells me greatness. 
you can tap into it, which I'm always usually able to tap into the speedsters. Most of us probably are. Alright, it's gonna be a really short race. I'm gonna make sure I keep her right here, though, because we are gonna have to fight a little bit. She's okay. She's okay, though. She's still okay. Get her moving. Get her moving. Get her moving comfortably. She has plenty of stamina left to go. We gotta rock and roll right now. Gotta rock and roll right now. Come on. Show me that speed, girl. Show me the speed. There we go. There we go. Come on. She's working. She's working. There we go. There it is, Honey Bee. There it is. There's the win. There's the close win at the wire. She gets her first grade one. I felt it. I felt it as soon as we hit that stretch, man. I'm like, she's going she's gonna to do it. She's going to peek right through just in time. I cut it close. I definitely cut it close, but I knew it as soon as we were in deep. As soon as we were at the beginning, the top of the stretch, I knew she was going to get there. I knew it. I, I just felt everything was right. We had our lane. I just had to stay consistent and stay disciplined with her. I didn't panic or nothing. I knew she had it. I knew she had it in there, man. Oh, let's go. Didn't mean to take the picture there. My goodness. But you know what? There it is. Honeybee's first grade one. Wow. Yeah, I cut that really close. Extremely close, actually. Cut that extremely close, man. But she gets it done finally. She gets her first grade one, and it is the Sprinter's Cup. That's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Great, great run there. Thus and Honeybee. Fantastic stuff. Let's go. Let's go. About toy, man. Told you guys the grade one win was coming. For her. Finally does in the Sprinter's Cup. Yippee Kai A. Hey, B ranked. Yeah, her speed's almost 80. Yeah, she's she's developing really nicely. I'm telling you, man, these Crimson Foals, they when they start kicking in, it's just like an explosion of talent. It's like some anime plot, man. The character is just training forever, and then you're like, oh, are they actually going to get stronger? You see them steadily making maybe some small gains, and then out of nowhere, it's just it, it's Super Saiyan Goku. That's like literally what's happening with these horses from Crimson Art. They're just exploding with talent. They want her in the King Cup Autumn... I'm going to say no thank ya. I'm going to take up the World Mile Cup. Yes, indeed. That's what we're going to do for Honey Bee. Bars on bars rhyming. I'm kidding. But seriously, Honey Bee, I think she's ready for that. I really do. Deneb, I never have raced here before. Let me look at these horses before I see the odds. Oh, I... Sp <clears throat> Cutting Crystal's the favorite. NGO. People, I swear somebody thought I was talking out of my you-know-what. NGO definitely is somebody that made this game and was probably a relatively high up, um, you know, employee of the company because every time I see him pop up, for me at least, he's always on the favorite and like the heavy favorite. He's never on just a mediocre horse. He's always on the favorite. Now, granted, I know he's like a special jockey here for these races, but every single time... He's like the best special jockey in the game. I know he's related to somebody else. And look at his name. Everybody else's name. Regular. Starks, Tucker, Howard, Hayes, Norton, Perry, Biggs. These are all very basic names. Even Chang. But N-G-O? Initials, basically? Come on, man. Vivid Legend. Not the favorite. Uh, because, of course, if you're racing against N-G-O, you will never be the favorite. And as I say that, some of you could probably play this game and NGO could be on long shots in your game for all we know. And I would believe you. The cringing wiping of the goggles? Like, they should already be clear, bro. The fact that you just did that probably just smudged them. Like, you definitely just smudged your goggles for dramatic effect. You, you gained no stat points in doing that. <laughs> you gained zero stat points for that. There's no boost to horse speed. There's no boost to endurance. Like, you just did that for no reason. For dramatic effect. Alright. So, Vivid. Let's get you this win, shall we? Beautiful track. My goodness, man. These, 
I gotta say, I think the tracks in this game look better than 2004. I think that the saturation in this game is much better. Like, the natural saturation. It's much, much better in here. Like, the green on the tracks looks, like, really green. You know, like a good, healthy green. We have plenty of stamina, so we're looking good. Gotta get him going. Get him moving, get him moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Here we go. Let's roll. Let's roll, boy. Ugh, almost over with him. Thank goodness. That was scary. I almost pushed that way too hard. Oh, man. He's, he's working. It's not going to be a win. A little bit too far back. But that's NGO on the 8. I guarantee it. Yeah. NG, well, we weren't going to beat NGO. Could have? Maybe. NGO is like a god in this game, man, for me. It's still second place, though. Like, come on. Behind Flaring Crystal, or Cutting Crystal, who sets the record. Cutting Crystal's a pretty darn fast horse. I'm not going to save that replay. That was, meh. I'm not giving NGO any more credit and attention than he already receives. Good run for Vivid. Could we have gotten up there? Maybe. I still think that was going to be tough. Like, literally, I don't often beat NGO in my races. I just don't. <laughs> I haven't had a horse at that level yet. I've had great horses, but like a horse where it's like, oh, I can actually beat NGO. I haven't had that happen yet. So it's fine. It's fine. I'm just putting my horses in races because, like, titles, I don't really know. Like, we got to win these races. I know this is like in the mid-champ category, which I think is what I was going to try to do for him anyway, so... That's all I can do. Still a couple more races left here. But uh, yeah, we weren't going to beat NGO. I mean, we could have, but... Striking Moon, finally back up, yeah. And uh, not the favorite, but good odds. Good odds, good chance. A and B is the favorite, ironically. Crimson Canaries in this field, Tropical Gem, okay. Moderate... Field. I mean, Ambi is going to be tough to beat, but uh, Striking Moon is also very fast, I'm telling you. It doesn't look like it. He is very, very fast in Deep Stretch. Top of the stretch and Deep Stretch. He's very fast. Only 72 speed, but he keeps that, right? He keeps that speed the whole time. And he's got the power to not lose too much endurance on most tracks uh, that have roughs or hills, inclines, whatever. Like, he can handle that and keep his top speed. So he's he's strong in those regards. That's why his power is also 76. Uh, I mean, that's why his power is 76, is what I'm trying to say. So he's a strong horse that can maintain his speed in deep stretch for the whole, the whole remainder of the race. That's a good attribute to have. Now, all I want to do is just keep him a little bit closer. That's all I want to do, just a little bit closer. Not this far up. We are ahead of way too many horses right now. Yeah, I just wish these fields weren't leading by so much. You know, that seems to be a common thing like in this game and then in 2004. The field will be separated by like 20 lengths on average, it feels like. Galbraiser 3, it's more hit or miss. But in this game, like, the AI will just go to the front, not even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Gotta get you going now. Gotta get you going now. He's got a good run. Keep moving, keep moving. There we go. There we go. Let's drive, man. Ah, we're not catching whoever this is. Stretch burst, though. It's gonna be close. Come on, Shmoon. Nope. Ah, too little, too late. But still, the four, the four wasn't budging. The four actually had us beat. We weren't going to beat the four. Huh, it's a good result, though. It's a show. And we finished where we were supposed to. Tropical Gem, yeah. And B, we actually were catching Aunt B, but Tropical Gem was dropping. I mean, Aunt B was dropping. Tropical Gem was kind of off to the races by themselves. And that's a race where I feel like it's the best I could do. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I started too uh, late. Didn't go early enough whatever positioning but that was a race i feel like i couldn't have done much more honestly ironically aunt b wasn't really the problem once she kind of gassed at the line tropical gem like i said it was off to the races and 
I couldn't really recover from that. Another gray two. It's a shorter distance, but he should be able to handle that. So we'll do it. Uh, who's up? Honeybee? Another grade one, right? This is part of GWS, isn't it? World Mile Cup, I think. Yep, World Mile Cup here. Big, big, big race here for Honeybee. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looks like a tough field. Golden Monsters here. It's a tough field. NGO is back, but he's actually not on the favorite. Wow, look at number 14. No favorite for NGO. Silly Love, Great Parade, Golden Monster, Flying Brian. Oh, it's a tough field, but I mean, Honeybee, she's right in there with them in the mix. She's right in there with them. So, we have the chance to win this with her. Golden Monster is the favorite. She's going to be the gal to beat, as usual, in these type of races. But, I mean, Honeybee is going to be right there in the mix with them. So, I'm not worried. I'm really not. She got her first grade one. Last time out. Could we make it two for two? I don't know. We will certainly give it our best shot. She's very calm as well. She's a very calm gal. But she, she's a calm gal that likes to run. You know what I mean? You're not going to have many issues with her. But once she's on track, she's like, you know, she's ready to go. She's very quick as well. So let's see how she does. This is a big race. Part of the GWS. Good start. She gets out well. It's too bad that she only wants to run as a closer because her starts would put her to the front pretty quickly, you know? Okay, slow down, please. Slow down. Not that much. Just here. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. That's it. Running a little bit too fast there. Okay. Alright, this is perfect. I move and then you move, seriously? Okay. Okay, this is where the race won. Just wanna make sure I get her up here in time. Cause we got a long way to go towards the front. We have a very long way to go. So I gotta get her moving now. Gotta get her moving now. Okay, we're good. We're good. She gets closer. We've never gotten that with her before. Let's see how she fights. Down the stretch we come here. With Honey being the World Mile Cup, she's still working. She's still working. Half a furlong left to go. Honey Bee is pushing. She's going to win the World Mile Cup. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This Philly, man. I told you guys, I keep telling you, when the Foles of Crimson Art kick into their talent, it's over, man. It's literally over. I'd never tapped into closer with her before, I don't think. Oh, wow. That's a GWS win as well. That's huge. That is a big, big win. Perfect art, I don't think, got a win like that. The World Mile Cup win for Honeybee. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a win. That's... That's unbelievable, man. That is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think we have to watch that back. We have to. And to be honest, oh, wrong memory card. Still quite a bit of racing to go for the rest of the year. So I could save that for another episode. It'll at least be seven to eight races minimum. So back-to-back -back G1 wins, World Mile Cup GWS. Oh my gosh, what a win, man. What a win. That is a big, big win for Honey Bee. That's a huge stage. She wins in front of a Chicago crowd. <laughs> We're supposed to, I'm supposed to finish fourth in that race. Keep that in mind as well. We're not even supposed to win. We were not even supposed to win that race. And she gets there at the line. I felt it coming. I felt it coming as we were still driving in the stretch. That's why I kind of went quiet. Because I'm like, I feel like there's a chance. It didn't look like it, but I'm like, no. If she keeps fighting, she can get there. I'm like, if she keeps fighting, she can definitely get there, man. And boy, did she. She 
She knows where the finish line is at. She's getting up there every time. She knows where the finish line is at, and she's getting up there just in time. Okay, we're working. Down the stretch we come. Rocking and rolling here with Honeybee. You'll see her poke through. There she is. Middle of your screen. It didn't look like much was happening here, but you can see her stride. She's digging in. She's digging in. We're going crazy. She's digging in. She's pushing and she's pushing. She just gets there. Talk about cutting it close. She gets there, though, which is the most important thing. Big win for my girl, man. Huge, huge, huge win for my girl, Honeybee. Gotta love it. That's a big time win for her. That's a big grade one. Her second grade one. Fantastic stuff, man. Like, let's freaking go. Yes, ma'am. 80 speed. Seven stats above the 70. Stamina breaking and temper. As she continues, those could also hit the 70s, actually. Because keep in mind, she has Crimson Arts growth type. Perfect Art didn't start peaking until after she was seven. Honeybee should be pretty similar. Despite the fact that she comes from Scotch Dancer, but she's still, she's still gonna have a late growth type from Crimson. She gets her second G1. Finally, two back-to-backs for the lady. Oh, man. Yeah, I gotta put her in the Continental Cup as well because we need these GWS wins. The China Mile will get her in that later. That's, the Continental's gonna be tough. Her endurance is, I mean, her endurance isn't bad. Her staying is good. She can actually handle that. Her power is not great. So depending on that track, that could be a little bit tough. But for the most part, she actually has the stats to handle that race at that distance. I just have to make sure I manage her stamina well. But as you can see, there's still quite a number of races. So I think I will end this episode here on that note. Because, uh... What a win from Honeybee there. To win that World Mile Cup. If I could get her a GWS title in her four-year-old season, uh, that'd be pretty darn amazing. Uh, that's what I'm going for, at least. Um, but we'll see, obviously, how that goes. Uh, those races do count for the GWS, don't they, with the red ribbons in this game? Like, the stats or the standings don't officially pop up or anything. I don't think. Do you have to look in the info office? Uh, main path. No, it's just regular crap. Reports? What is that? No, this is just for jockey stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Ratings? Hmm. Are any of my horses up here? Say rulers on dirt. Yeah, none of my horses are up here for ratings. A little shocking. I think we're doing... Well, Vivid Legend is, but that's about it. None of my... Originals, I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. How does the GWS work in this game? Yeah, now I think about it, I've actually never 